okay so let me share my screen with you guys okay uh, i will be running a slideshow and can you guys see my screen now the slideshow anyone please respond yes sir all right so uh, i'm on my uh, presentation now so i won't be looking at the themes if any one of you has any query or comment or suggestion just jump in right away you don't have to raise your hand okay uh, all right we have talked about the course learning outcomes and the book uh, okay before we start discussion about the first topic of this course i would like to discuss something uh, which i feel is important because uh, for an year or so we are we have been uh, studying online and we have been communicating online with uh, like the teachers and the students so there are certain things that i have observed uh, for online communication and i wanted to share those things with you uh, whenever we are communi we communicate online there are certain etiquettes or manners that we must uh, follow uh, and here i just want to uh, i just want to share those things with you so that uh, you guys practice those things in your academic life and when you go to your professional life you are you you are already well versed with these things so let's see what are some of the etiquettes first thing is that uh, email is the best way of communicating uh, communicating online it's a formal way uh, throughout the world email is considered as a formal way of communication so if you are communicating with your teacher or with your uh, employer with your client with your boss or higher up uh, email is always preferable and uh, especially in this world of online communication email has got a lot of significance uh, although uh, even in this in the pre corona world globally email was uh, was given its due weightage but in our part of the world email was people did not used to take email seriously before but now emails have got a lot of importance because most of the time we are uh, communicating online and uh, whatsapp messages or text messages those are informal ways of communication you can use them when you are communicating with your family or your friends uh, but as far as the formal communication is concerned uh, email is, is is a better way to communicate and it's preferable way and uh, sometimes students send emails and they send an email on let's say friday night or saturday night and they have a question and then they need an immediate answer okay uh, but that is not the right thing to do if you are uh, you are sending an email on the weekend do not expect its answer before the next working day if any assignment is due on monday or if you have an exam on monday and you expect that you might have some answer uh, some questions to ask then try to ask them questions those questions on uh, the wednesday or thursday before the weekend so that you can get the answer by friday uh, uh, because everybody whether it's your employer or your teacher they have a professional life and then they have a personal life weekends or holidays are for uh, for personal works so do not expect uh, your teacher or your uh, employer to respond to your emails on the weekend you can send an email on the weekend that's not a problem but uh, do not insist on getting a, uh, on getting a response on the weekend okay if the other person is convenient he might respond on the weekend uh, but that's his or her choice okay sometimes students send emails on the weekends and they insist that oh this this assignment is due monday morning or i have an exam monday morning so i need an immediate answer but that is not the right thing to do uh, try to avoid phone calls as far as possible and be extra careful on holidays because a phone call means yeah, the other person need to pick up your call and respond to your queries immediately. But the person on the other end might be busy having some meeting or or doing his personal stuff or whatever. Uh, 
so e phone calls are, are not preferable and especially on the holidays no don't make phone calls and always try to communicate during the office hours for example for your teachers the office hours are from 8 a.m to 4 p.m although we do a lot of things after the uh, yeah, of our jobs after the working hours as well like preparing the lectures etc but still if you want to communicate it, it's always preferable uh, do it during the office hours and if you send an email after the office hours then <coughs> expect its answer uh, on the next working day not uh, not in the evening and sometimes students send messages or emails which are uh, which does not seem to be that important okay so whenever you are communicating with your teachers you need to be uh, respectful of their time okay uh, and whenever you write down an email let's say and you have let's say three different questions it is always preferable to uh, to number them question number one question number two and question number three okay so you should be very clear in your communication whatever you want to ask if it's a single question then it's fine you can write it down in a paragraph but if multiple questions it's better to number those questions one two three so that the other person can uh, clearly get your message and respond to your email sometimes the emails are not clear and uh, before responding to that email or responding to those answers, uh, we feel that we need to ask some more questions about the question in order to get clear understanding of the question. Uh, and you are less likely to get the response uh, or get the answer of those questions because if the question is straightforward and we can answer it right away, then it's more likely you'll get a response. But if uh, the question needs further clarification, then most of the time we think, OK, I'll send an email about this question and then we forget about that. So uh, be very clear in your questions. And last thing is use formal language. This is very important. Sometimes students communicate with their teachers and they use casual language. Uh, that is not the right thing to do. We should use whenever you are communicating with your teacher or with your employer or your client, you should always use uh, uh, use formal language and I give you an example of uh, formal language and a comparison of formal and casual language. Uh, for example, if the answer to a question is yes, sir. OK. And you write down yeah or you write down yups. Now that's a casual way of responding. You can do this if you are communicating with your friends or your family. That's totally fine. But whenever you are in a formal setting, you should use formal language. And uh, another important thing here is that uh, when you try to be respectful, uh, in different cultures, there are different ways of being respectful. For example, uh, in our part of the world, uh, when we want to give respect to somebody, to some senior, we use the word sir. We use this title. Uh, actually, this title comes from the European side because we have been a colony of uh, British Empire and that's their culture that they use this term, sir. But uh, like this is not the same throughout the world. In different cultures, people use uh, different ways of being polite or being respectful. So whatever country you are in, uh, you need to um, you need to learn the norms of that culture, that country, and then behave accordingly. For example, uh, if you are in United States, there they don't use this term, sir. So if let's say uh, like if we talk about Pakistani culture, and let's say you are talking to our chairman, uh, you will say, sir Khalid Parun. But if you are uh, in United States and you want to address him, you won't use sir, rather you will call him with his last name. And before that, you can use doctor like Dr. Farooq. That's totally fine if you are in the United States, OK? But that's not the culture here. And in some other countries, they use the term of professor. If you are talking to your teacher, instead of saying sir, you use professor, Professor Salim or Professor Farooq, something like that. So there are the, the point I want to make is that whatever culture you are in, you need to learn the norms of that culture and be respectful accordingly. Uh, 
next, I just wanted to share a, a simple template of an email because I said that uh, I uh, it is always preferable to use email for communication. Uh, and some of times, some of the times I see emails which are very casual and that, that is not appropriate. So I just wanted to give, although this is very basic, but from my experience, I have learned that probably we need to talk about the basics as well. Everybody is not clear about the basics, okay? So email, definitely you will write down the email address, the person you are talking to. Uh, the subject, subject should be very clear and it should give you a clear idea uh, uh, the, that what uh, about what topic the email is. And yeah, I'll tell you one more thing about subject later on. Uh, then you address the person. If you want to be like, it's okay to just say sir, or if you want to be more polite, you can say dear sir or respectable sir, something like that. And then you add a line uh, that I hope you are doing well, or I hope this email finds you well, something like that. That's another way of being nice. And then you write down the main text of your email and at the end you should give a signature and you can say best regards or kind regards or just regards or thank you uh, and this in our email uh, we have this option of defining a, uh, a signature so at the bottom you can provide a predefined signature here i've just given an example name and your roll number or if you are uh, working as a professional, the name and your designation, something like that. So that's the basic format of an email. Yeah, one one thing that I wanted to share about the subject line. Once I was communicating with a student and we had an exchange of four or five emails. Uh, and what he did was that every time he used to send me an email, like in the same thread, he used to write down his response in the email, in the subject line of the email. Now, when you write down your, uh, your response in the subject line, what happens is that the track of your response is not kept. And if I look at the uh, email, that thread of emails, now I cannot see that, what did he say? So it's just, it seems just like a one way communication. And that's not the right thing to do. Do not write down your response in the subject line. Write down your subject, your response in the main body of the email. Um, and use formal language. Don't use casual language and try to be uh, nice in your language. For example, um, it, like in, in every language, there are multiple ways of expressing anything. Uh, some ways are nice and some ways are not that very nice. For example, if I say I want to tell you this thing. Now in English, this thing like when you tell somebody that's a bit orderish. In its uh, like it, it sends a bit orderish. So we don't say I, I tell you this thing to do it. Uh, if I say this, it's more like an order rather if you want to uh, tell some, something to your teacher, you will say, I wanted to let you know that and so on. OK, so try to learn these uh, such phrases of uh, of politeness in English. But anyways, these were some of the basic things that I observed uh, in the online communication. So I thought that uh, it's important to share these things so that everybody know these things and you practice this in your academic life. And when you uh, go for your professional life, you don't feel any difficulty. OK, uh, now let me come to the teams. Anybody having any question about this? Or do you want to ask something? Or any comments? We have 34 attendees at this point. Anybody? Is there anything you want to ask about the online communication? Or any difficulty that you have faced in the past you want to share? Uh, no. OK, one thing that just come into my mind, a student asked that uh, if 
if I ask a question about anything and I get a response and then I have another question about this, should I use the yes, should I respond in the same thread of email or should I write down a new email? So uh, it is always preferable that you use the same thread of emails so that the other person can keep track of the communication. OK, if you. You have like you have to ask your question multiple times. You can use the same email and you, you can reply uh, to the same email that will help uh, everybody to keep track of the discussion. OK, so guys, if you do not have any question about this, then let's move on. Uh, after this, I want to talk about uh, some of the basic definitions, a couple of basic definitions actually. Uh, like this subject is of professional ethics, so we need to understand these two terms. What do we mean by professional and what do we mean by ethics? So first let's talk about professional. Now anybody having any idea that what a professional is? I'm sure you guys would have heard this term a lot of times. Uh, so what is your understanding of this term professional? Anybody, I, I, I need responses from your side. And uh, as I as I mentioned earlier that you, you don't need to be worried about the correctness of your answer, right? I, I don't mind wrong answers. It's fine. This is not an exam. Nobody is judging you here. Just say whatever you think or whatever idea comes to your mind when you think this hear, hear this word of professional. Sub -professional. And I'm on my teams now, so you can raise your hand so that I can get to know uh, who I'm talking to. Uh, G. Hassan ya Hassan Elias. Hassan. Hassan. Okay, Hassan. G, please go ahead. Sub professional is some is like formal attitude or behavior which we adopt in organization or like where we do work or job. Like there are certain limits in professional atmosphere. No, I'm uh, Hassan. My question was about professional, not professional ethics. Just professional. Who is a professional? Hassan, yeah, please go ahead. Hassan. Yes, who like a, a particular person serving a particular job, a okay. particular profession? OK, a person who is serving in a particular profession. OK. Y yes, sir. All right, Zishan. Sir, kisi bhi kaam mein jo bhi wo banda kaam kar raha hai, us kaam mein mahir hona kisi bhi kaam mein usse matlab professional karte hain. Being an expert, if you are an expert of certain field, then you are known as professional. All right. <coughs> Somebody else raised his hand before. <coughs> Anybody else? Actually, there are multiple ways of defining a professional. There is no one single definition. Jitalha. Uh, sir, profession ye hota hai ke, uh, serving in your specific occupation. You have occupation select ye up usme self curve. Kisiko. Up usme self curve. Okay, okay, that's right. So as I said that there are multiple ways in which we can define a professional. So professional is an expert in his or her field and he's somebody who we trust to and we assign him certain tasks to do and he provides services and he charges money against that uh, against those services. So this is another definition of professional that a person who charges money against his services is a professional. He might not be a, a great expert of his area, but still if he is charging money for his services, he is a professional. And on the other side, if a person is expert, very expert uh, in his area, but he is not charging money, uh, he may still be called as a professional. Like some people argue about this, that whether he is a professional or not, uh, people 
um, take this like charging money as an intrinsic part of being a professional. An opposite to professional is an amateur. Amateur is a person who is a beginner, not an expert in his field, and he might not be charging any money against his services. So that is a profession. And next definition is ethics. What do we mean by ethics? Anyone? Any idea? When you hear the word ethics, what does come to your mind? Uh, GSN. Sir, moral principles. Moral principles. Okay. Good or bad. All right. Any other idea? Talha. Uh, sir, my name is Talal. He is a girl. Talha is confused. Oh, sorry. Okay, Talal. Okay, Talal. I'm sorry. Talal. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, जो एथिक्स होते हैं वो मॉरल प्रिंसिपल्स होते हैं जो कि हमारे सर्टेन बिहेवियर को वो डिपेक्ट करते हैं दूसरे के मुकाबले में दूसरे के मुकाबले में ऑलराइट लेट्स करेक्ट एक्चुअली अगेन देर आर डिफरेंट वेज ऑफ डिफाइनिंग एथिक्स वन वे इस ऑफ डिफाइनिंग एथिक्स इस दैट इट्स अ सेट ऑफ स्टैंडर्ड बिहेवियर्स दैट वी आर सप Ethics are for everybody, for all human beings, because we, um, even if we are professionals, but still, that's not the only, uh, that's not our only role. We, every human being has multiple roles. Like right now, you are students. I am a teacher, but at the same time, we are citizen of this uh, country. We are member of the society. We are member of our family. We are a member of our social circle. Uh, so we are in different roles and in every role we have certain uh, responsibilities and we have certain uh, uh, duties and we have certain rights so ethics are the set of behavioral standards that we are supposed to follow and if we talk about those standards that we need to uh, or those behaviors that are required to be uh, adopted as a professional then that is termed as professional ethics so these are the two basic terms, ethics and uh, professional eth ethics and professional. OK. One of the definition of both these terms is given here in the slide. OK, now after this, uh, when we talked about the course content, we discussed that we will try to understand the scope and need of professional ethics with different case studies. So there are um, so we'll talk about different scenarios and we will see that uh, what are the possible ethical and unethical uh, situations that may arise in different scenarios. Let's consider one scenario. So let's say you are in a decision making position in a company. Uh, company wants to buy some equipment. OK, uh, civil engineers, when we work professionally, we work either for a consultant or a client or a contractor. And in every uh, in every capacity, we have to sometimes buy and sell things. So let's say you are at the top of a company, the CN making position, and you have some equipment to buy. Uh, and whenever we have uh, any purchase that is beyond certain amount, a certain minimum amount of money, then we we have to call for the uh, for the quotations or bids. And the contract is awarded to the supplier, whoever provides lowest price. Let's say you ask for uh, proposals and you get three proposals for that equipment. Proposal number one, the supplier one gives a proposal of 2.0 million, supplier two 1.9 million, and supplier three gives a uh, quotation of 2.1 million. Now, what do you think? Who should get the award? The ethical decision would be the contract is awarded to which supplier. And um, we are making an assumption that all these suppliers are providing material uh, according to the required standard. OK. 
So we are making an assumption that all the suppliers are providing material according to standard. Now, what do you think? OK, now I'm back on my teams. So what do you think? What are different possible unethical solutions or situations that may arise in this situation? We want to buy an equipment. We get three quotations and we have we should award it to the lowest bidder if the quality of material provided by all the three suppliers is the same. But what do you think? What is practice in the industry or what are some of the unethical uh, practices that might be there? Anybody having any idea about this? Jitalal. Excuse me, sir. Sorry, etiquettes of online communication, sir. Ye wali slide show hai. Um, actually, I'm out of the PowerPoint now. Just when we need to discuss the slides, I'll I'll come to the PowerPoint. So don't worry about that. I want your responses, and then I will share the you know, the unethical scenarios that I have. Okay, so Talal. सर एक अनएथिकल सिनेरियो ये हो सकता है कि जो हमारे पास बीडर था उसने ये कहा था कि मैं आपको इस स्पेसिफिक अमाउंट में काम करके दूंगा लेकिन सर जब फिनिश वर्क कंप्लीट होता है तो वो कहता है कि नहीं अमाउंट बढ़ गई है और आप मुझे ज्यादा पे करो ओके ऑल राइट दैट वुड बी एन लाइक अ डिसऑनेस्टी माइट बी अ डिसऑनेस्टी एट द एंड ऑफ द सप्लायर बट इफ वी टॉक अबाउट आवरसेल्फ like we are at the decision making position what unethical things we can do if like right now i i just want to focus on that uh, sir hum jo uh, apna wo hai uh, jis bande ke sath hum kaam kar rahe hain uske sath sahi communicate na kare use timely inform na kare so timely inform na kare okay and how we can play with this award of contract हम इसमें क्या कर सकते हैं कैन वी कैन वी मनीपुलेट दिस थिंग इंस्टेड ऑफ गोइंग फॉर द लोएस्ट बिडर कैन वी गो विद द हाईएस्ट और सेकंड हाईएस्ट बिडर एंड हाउ कैन वी इज देयर एनी पॉसिबिलिटी दैट वी कैन मनीपुलेट द सिचुएशन एनीबॉडी सर जो कॉन्ट्रैक्ट का क्लॉज है सर कॉन्ट्रैक्ट के क्लॉज के अंदर सर कुछ हिडन थिंग्स रख लें कि वो जो हमारे पास हमारा क्लाइंट है उसको पता ना हो और बाद में इन द एंड फाइनलाइज होते हुए उसे पता लगे कि ये तो फ्रॉड था ओके ओके जिशान सर हम लो क्वालिटी ले लें मतलब कि स्टैंडर्ड वाली चीजें ना लें उससे उससे हम लो क्वालिटी ले लें हाउ हाउ वुड इट बेनिफिट अस हमें उससे क्या फायदा होगा सर नो हमें मतलब के पैसों बजट का फायदा हो सकता है कि कम बजट में मिल सकती है वो हाँ लेकिन वो बजट तो इफ यू आर लेट्स से यू आर पार्ट ऑफ ए गवर्नमेंट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सो यू विल गेट अ लो बजट इक्विपमेंट दैट मनी यू विल सेव द मनी ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन वट अबाउट योर लाइक योर पर्सनल बेनिफिट how can you gain some personal benefit out of it or how people do this any idea sorry okay yeah i would suggest you to write down your like your proper name on your teams like for example i see a name here fool g now who is this oh he just left i mean what is this yeah just use your formal yeah this, this is one of the ethics right you are in a class it's a formal setting so you should not be Uh, signing in with with such names okay anyways uh, anybody 
how we can manipulate the situation. Okay, let me give you some ideas. <coughs> Let's come back to the PowerPoint. Okay, so unethical decision number one. Supplier one is your friend and he's not the, he has not given the lowest bid and you want to award him the contract. What will you do? You might say that uh, uh, you avoid the contract to uh, supply number one and you give the reason that the quality of equipment ever, uh, provided by supply number two is not good. I am, in reality, we are assuming that the quality of, of the material or the equipment provided by all the suppliers meet the standards. But uh, just to make an excuse, you say that the quality of material provided by supplier number two, who is the lowest bidder, is not good. And you make that excuse and then you award the contract to uh, supplier number one, who is your friend. So this is an unethical decision. Uh, and if you are at the top of the organization, nobody can challenge your decision. And what wrong has happened in this situation? Uh, this type of wrongdoing is termed as nepotism. When you favor your relatives or your friends, this is termed as nepotism and it's an unethical thing to do. Because in such cases, the people who have the right to get certain job or certain uh, contract, they are deprived of their right. Unethical decision number two. You have a friend who can supply the same equipment, but he did not submit the proposal. So among the, uh, the people who have submitted the proposal, nobody is your friend, but you know another friend who can uh, do the job and supply the equipment. So you reveal the information, the lowest proposal to him that it's 1.9 million, and you ask him to submit a proposal then a lesser amount of money, 1.8 million, let's say and then you award him the contract. So in this case, somebody might say that, OK, um, our company saved some money, 0.1 million, and I've, my friend got the project. So it's like a win-win situation. It's fine, but actually it's it's unethical to do that. And what is unethical here that you have disclosed an information that you were not supposed to disclose. So disclosure of information, a confidential information is the unethical activity here. And then there is another scenario, third unethical decision that you like none of the uh, supplier is your friend, neither any one of your uh, friend can do this work, but you contact a random supplier and who has not submitted the proposal, you contact him, you tell him that, okay, this is the lowest bid and give a quotation uh, of uh, a lesser amount, let's say 1.8 million, and then you award that contract to that company and you take a commission and whatever you call it, whether commission or bribe or illegal money, commission is a, uh, is a, is a bit fancy word or a bit respectable word of for the money that you earn this way, but that, that's bribe actually. And again, somebody may say, oh, the company saved the money. Actually, something that we were supposed to get at a cost of 1.9 million, we have got that at 1.8 million and you have made some money out of it too. So uh, it's a win-win situation. But again, the decision is unethical. And what is wrong here? Again, you disclose the information that you are not supposed to disclose and you made illegal money out of it. That commission is illegal. And then there is another scenario, the fourth situation. <coughs> you make your own company. You know that um, uh, the organization that you are working for that has to buy equipment uh, several times. So you, what you do, you register your own company. You become a supplier by yourself and you register the company on the name of your brother or son or any other family member. And then you award the contract to your own company because you have all the information and you manipulate the situation and you always you award the contract to your company and you, you might be working 
um, according to the standards, I mean, the quality of work might be OK, but it is still an unethical decision. Yeah, and what is wrong here? You are manipulating the position, the power of your position uh, for your own benefit. So that, that is something wrong. We, we are not supposed to do that. So these are uh, different unethical uh, decision makings that we might do uh, in this case study. So anybody having any query about this? Okay. Ethical solution here is that you have got the bids or you have got the uh, quotations. Whoever is providing, like first of all, you see that what are the companies who are providing the material as per the standards and whoever are those companies from those companies, you select the lowest bidder. And you award the contract to that, for example, in the in this scenario, we said that the lowest supplier is supplier number two who made a proposal of 1.9 million. So ethical decision is that the contract should be awarded to him. Right away. OK. Uh, Zishan, G. Zishan. Sir, point number four. Mein. अगर हमारी अपनी कंपनी है और हम एक अच्छी क्वालिटी दे रहे हैं और रीजनेबल अमाउंट में बजट में तो इसमें अनएथिकल क्या चीज है तो हम कर तो सकते हैं हां अनएथिकल ये चीज है व्हेन यू आर एट द टॉप ऑफ एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड बेसिकली योर रोल इज टू कीप अ चेक एंड बैलेंस ऑन द अदर पीपल ऑन द थर्ड पार्टीज दैट इज वर्किंग फॉर योर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन if another supplier is supplying material or equipment to, to your organization and you are at the top of that organization, your role is to have a check and balance on that on that person or on that organization. And if you are also like uh, we also call the situation a conflict of interest, you are also on the other uh, uh, in the other company then how would you ensure the quality of the work? It's just like, for example, I like I, I, I assume you all of you guys are honest, right? So should I give you your answer books of your like, let's say, should I give you your midterm exam to grade? I mean, that's your exam and I'm assuming that, OK, everybody's honest. OK, let's grade your exam and give me your honest, um, give your honest feedback or your grading. Would that be fine? I mean, there, there might be some some angels there who will do it correctly, but is it right thing to do? Can we uh, do this in, in all the cases and can we uh, show that kind of trust? I think that's hard. And uh, whenever there is such conflict of interest that uh, Let's say I am at the topmost position of a company and then another company of mine is providing the equipment. So. I mean, saving money for that small company would be in my interest. So uh, because of that conflict of interest, I, I mean, it's very likely that or it's obvious that I'll have the tendency to save money um, in the capacity of supplier and it's very likely that I'll compromise on the quality of the um, uh, of my work. It's, it's very likely, so it's not recommended to do that. OK. Any other question? No, sir. No. OK, uh, with this, I want to give you guys an assignment. Your first assignment for this course and what your assignment is. Now in in our professional life, we work either as a client or a contractor or as a consultant. Like we civil engineers. Now what I want is that I want you guys to contact any one of these three organizations. You can you may contact a client or a contractor or a consultant. If you contact a client, ask about the unethical practices of consultant and contractors. If you contact a consultant, ask about the unethical practices of client and contractor. If 
you reach out a contractor, ask about the unethical practices of a client and consultant. So I want a list of those unethical practices from each one of you. You may contact any one of these three organizations. You don't have to contact all of them. Just anyone, whatever you may find, a friend or a relative or a senior working for any one of these organizations, just contact him or her and get the information about the unethical practices. And I don't need a uh, I don't need long stories, just one to two page assignment. And you will submit your assignment, send your assignment to your CR. Uh, CR, are you there? Are you in class? Yes, sir. Kya naam hai aapka CR? Muhammad Akib Iqbal. Akib Iqbal. Okay, Akib, aap class ke baad, uh, just send me your uh, contact number in the uh, in the chat, okay? Okay, sir. Uh, so all of you will send your assignment to your CR uh, till Sunday night. Our class is on Monday and Monday early morning or Sunday night after 12 o'clock. CR, you will uh, put all those assignments in a folder, zip it and send it to me. Okay? And your in our next class, we will be talking about those issues that you will collect from these organizations. And in another class, a student asked that uh, we want to go for some other organizations as well, other than client, contractor and consultant, like other companies, because this is professional ethics. So I have allowed them this and similarly, I'm OK uh, even for you guys. If you guys go for yeah, other organizations other than these three, although the assignment that I have written the problem statement I've just mentioned these three organizations, three, three types of organizations. But if you like, you can go for other organizations as well. Uh, in that way, we will get a, a flavor of, of different organizations. OK. So any question about this? Sir, if we contact someone from these three, जो related unethical activities हैं वो तो तकरीबन same ही बताएंगे सारे क्योंकि इस तरह match करने की जो भी मतलब अगर जिन्होंने client से राब तक किया है उन सारे students की तकरीबन match कर रही होगी assignments it's okay no worries but if you write down write it down in your own words then we'll clearly see that whether you have done your work by yourself or if it is copied OK, was I contact a person like the uh, the type of activity might be same unethical activity, but everybody will be writing it down in his or her own words and that description would be different. And if any activities matches that I understand that that's fine. Any other query? No, sir. All right, if you guys do not have any other query, uh, let me mark your attendance. Okay. Not downloading, just give me a moment. Uh, all right, guys, so if you do not have any question further. Or oh, let me see, I see some message in my chat. All right. Um, OK, I said. I will uh, like I'll be covering these slides. Hopefully next week we we'll finish the set of slides, so I will share the slides with you guys. Don't worry about that. OK. OK, sir. All right, so see you guys in next class, inshallah. Okay, Allah Hafiz. Okay, Allah Hafiz.